we had, uh, uh, tell the first part, we had a fight. Okay, our son, our son was traveling across the country by horse before the pandemic. That's a long story about how a Jewish kid raised in Manhattan ends up going by himself by horseback. Sometimes I think this hideous pandemic and he's saved a performer to, per to perform in people's homes all over yeah, the world. Yeah, under a different name. Anyway, he gets, you know, he can't do this anymore. Horse feeds are closing. He can't be in people's home. And he's worried about us surviving. So he comes home to take care of us. And it was the anniversary of our first date, um, April, April 16th of 2020. And we're walking. He's just come home, so we're 10 feet away from him, on you know, quarantine road. on Country Road. And he says, guys, he takes a lot of what he calls family archives Pulls out the movies. phone and said, don't worry, family archives. Yeah. And, you know. So um, he said, how did you celebrate your first date? And I said, we had a big fight, huge fight. And he says, oh, tell me about it. So we both tell him about this fight. And then he says at the end of the story, do you mind if I post this? And we say- I didn't know what he was talking about. I said, what do you mean? What does that mean? Post what? I mean, literally I had an image of printing something out and posting it, you know? <laughs> like nailing it up on a tree. <laughs> and his- <laughs> I love this woman! I love her! <laughs> and his- um, his idea, which is something that makes us proud, is we work for the international. <laughs> Told you we're gonna have fun I've tonight. I've never heard posting it on the tree. Okay. That was the first I've ever heard that. <laughs> I'm gonna remind him of this moment when he's not feeling so in love with me, you know. Well, that's but, never happened. Yeah. What do you remember about that night? The Tony night. The Tony night. Well, I remember we were in that hotel at one point going up an escalator and Walter Cronkite was coming down. <laughs> and that was the highlight of the evening for me. But I do remember um, sitting there. I left my wallet with my friend. I have it in my wallet. It's a little tiny silver touchstone. It's flat. And when I started doing Evita, uh, we, we opened it in LA, then San Francisco, then we brought it to New York. From the time we open, I'm, an, I'm a young kid, 25 years old. Everybody come back and says, you're gonna win the Tony Award. You're gonna win an award. You're gonna, and you go nuts hearing that. You went, leave me alone. Just let me do this. I'm having a nice time. Get out of my room, will you? And, and to the point where, you know, just, so I started making a joke out of it just to calm me down, you know, figuring I won't win. And I said, right, right. Then I'll have a, a medal like the Lion and the Wizard of Oz and I'll have courage and that'll be just you great. Said you wish had a medal. Yeah, yeah. Like Wish those. I had a medal like the Lion and the Wizard of Oz, then I'd have courage, and that's what the Tony Award will be. And uh, Lynn Redgrave comes on stage to read the category. And it's a year and a half since we'd been doing this play, the Vita. And Catherine puts something in my hand. And I look at it, and it's this little yellow, this little mellow metal touchstone. Just that, that, that big, just this big. On one side, and I love this woman for many reasons, but it's, it's, she taught me everything, everything, and, and my two sons. She's our, she's our Torah. And, and on one side, it was a quote by E.E. E. Cummings. To be nobody but yourself in a world which is doing its best night and day to make you everybody else means to fight the hardest battle which any human being can fight and never stop fighting. And the other side said, a medal for the, for lion. the lion, courage, courage and love, Catherine. Always. And the yeah. next thing I heard was my name <laughs> and I ran up there and then I just remembered looking for my dad. And that was it. I'll tell you the one really significant story of Trelawney of the Wells is I only knew three things when I was in my 20s. I was gonna have a life in the theater, I was gonna be a mother, and I was never gonna go out with an actor, okay? And my boyfriend at the time, I went to see what I'd missed doing when I finished the job in LA, and I was sitting next to this man who was very lovely and I'd been seeing for a few years, and this young guy comes on stage and I said out loud, usually I would think something like this and not say it out loud. I said to him, now he's my type. What am I doing with you? <laughs> and so 
my favorite thing is when, is when uh, somebody says to their child or grandchild, you know who that is. That's the guy in, in that movie. And, the, and, you look, and we watch the kid's face, and the kid's face goes like, you're lying. <laughs> and I walk over to the kid, and I lean into the kid so just mom and dad can see him. And I say, hello. My name is Inigo Montoya. Oh. You killed my father. Prepare to die. Ladies and gentlemen, please. Catherine Grody, Mandy Patinkin. Thank you. Beautiful job, beautiful job.